Hello everybody, my name is Shai and this video is two things, two things, not four things, <laughs> two things. It is the weekly reading for the middle of July 2022, but this reading is also very, 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 very much a timeless reading for whenever you happen to be drawn into this video because, I mean, this is true of essentially everything, not just my videos, but any kind of content, media, writing, communication, art, like literally anything that humans ever make. It is has a certain wave of, rel like everything goes in waves, right? Just like waves on the ocean, everything goes in waves. There is a certain peak wave of relevance for the moment that it is created and the people that it is created for in that moment. But then there are also peaks of or waves, you know, peak waves of relevance and resonance for everyone else as they find it throughout time, right? So that 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 is just particularly relevant even for for this week. And the thing about this week is that or, you know, whenever you, it's the, it, this week, and I mean that for those of us who are watching this in the middle of July 2022, and also your week for whenever you're watching this, no matter what year it is, right? This week, this week, this week, there is a specific type of, like, calibration coming through, like, like a, a, a cosmic calibration coming through. It is... I mean, like like almost all cosmic calibrations <laughs> or activations, right? It has to do with accelerating the evolution of your consciousness, if you, in fact, do wish to accelerate the evolution of your consciousness. Um, but this one has like a specific type of theme or slant to it. The I, I, could, I could describe this in two ways. I could say that it is to... No, you know, I'm, I'm not going to describe it that way. I got like a massive amount of resistance as those words were going to come out of my mouth. So I'm going to say it in a different way. Um, it's essentially going to allow you to learn faster is what this is. To learn faster. Like on a human level, on a human level. For your human self to literally learn things faster. Um, like learning a language faster. Learning a new skill faster. Um even like being able to read faster or to run faster, it, it's... And more to the point, it's about not requiring the learning process to be this long, drawn out thing where you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, like, for example, the you know, there are so many different things, so, so, so many different things like that humans have been kind of arguing about or tossing back and forth for decades. I mean, or hundreds of years or thousands of years, right? But let's, we can specifically think of uh, l the, the example that comes to mind. Sorry, I'm getting really distracted because my husband is like excitedly talking very loudly in the next room. So it's like really derailing me. But what I was trying to say was the example that comes to mind is, you know, the so-called debate of nature versus nurture, right? Is it nature versus nurture? And this has been a topic of scholarly discussion, right? With psychologists of varying varieties and philosophers kind of going back and forth and debating this and writing papers on this and doing even like scientific studies on this, right? Biologists getting involved physicians getting involved and, and it's just been this this thing right and everybody has an opinion everybody has to you've probably written a paper on that at some point even just in high school right is it is it nature versus nurture right what like what, what is it and this has been going back and forth back and forth back and forth people arguing about it and like why has this been stewing and churning and back and forth back and forth for so so long right why have humans just been mulling this over for so long it's like been in the blender for so long I mean, it's because they're trying to figure it out, right? They're trying to figure it out. But I bet most of you watching this probably kind of just intuitively feel that, well, wh why is this such a debate, right? Why are we debating nature versus nurture? Clearly there is some degree of nature and nurture to to how we are, right? <laughs> it's both, it's both. Why does it have to be either or? Why is everyone arguing about this? Um, and so that's the kind of thing, like that's just one example, right? That, that kind of um, illustrates this, this kind of 
long drawn out bickering process that we're, we're trying to move beyond, right? Um, instead of spending 50 years studying and debating an idea, you want to just be able to just essentially tune in to your higher wisdom and click into a, I want to be careful about how I say this because it's not about finding the one truth. It's not about finding the one fact and it's not about being right. It's just about clicking into your own innate wisdom and holding that idea it's not even about coming to a conclusion. You don't have to come to firm conclusions about things. It's just kind of holding the idea gently and holding the idea with neutrality, right? The kind of way, you know, I, I might say, you know, we don't need to argue about whether it's na nature versus nurture. We just kind of go, okay, how about it's just both? It seems easy and normal and natural for it to just be a bit of both, right? And we can just kind of let this argument go away. We can just let it fade away because it seems to be intuitive to me that it's just both and I can just kind of click into that and then I don't need to think about it anymore, right? Unless it kind of comes up as something for me to re-examine, but until that happens, I'll just kind of be okay holding neutrally, holding gently the idea that it is nature and nurture, right? Just kind of clicking into that. So that kind of process that I just described, that can happen even on the level of like learning a language or learning an instrument or learning how to cook or learning how to drive like whatever you're trying to do right you can tune into your higher wisdom and essentially download the the frequency package to just gently embody the idea and then you don't have to go through this long drawn out process of this protracted learning thing because if humans can transcend this struggle to learn because I mean it, it has been extremely difficult for humans to learn right because we've had to go through this like experience of linear learning and it is very slow both on a personal level and very 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 much on a societal level right so we it's going to really help us to speed up our own personal learning processes because then society and the planet as a whole can speed up the whole learning process and that is going to help us get to a better place sooner, right? That's what this is really about. Um, okay, let me flip up the cards. I still have more to say about this, but <laughs> Nine of Crystals, Oppression, and King of Cups. Okay. This oppression card, this would be the devil in a, in a typical tarot. Um, it doesn't really vibe really devil energy to me because I tend to actually like the devil card. Um, this oppression, this is, you know, somebody is blind. Somebody has a sheet over their head, right? They can't see what they're doing, but what are they doing? They are literally levitating these items. They have magical powers of levitation and they can't see that that's what they're doing. They might be sitting there thinking, oh, my hands are empty. Uh, and I'm weak and powerless, but really they're so powerful that they're levitating crystals, right? Um, so this process of speeding up our, like accelerating our learning process is going to kind of break us free of this oppression, right? And to me, this really feels like self-oppression, right? Ways that we have oppressed ourselves, like personally. Um, but that is, of course, is also reflected on a more planetary level or on a kind of larger level where, you know, you might have external forces in your life that are oppressing you, right? Um, I always tend to see, because through, through my own experience, through my own journey, through everything that I have had to learn personally, uh, you know, whenever I have forces in my life that are kind of oppressing me externally, I always end up learning and being shown how, how they are a reflection of my own, like, inner personal self-oppression, right? Self-oppression, it's always a reflection. So as you free yourself from self-oppression, then you also free yourself of external oppression. And how are we gonna do that? Through self-sovereignty, independence, and compassion, and emotional balance, right? Nine of Pentacles and Nine of Crystals here with the self-sovereignty. Oh, we even got Orion here. Orion is in the sky. Self-sovereignty and independence. Separating yourself from the miasma of everyone else's consciousness, right? Separating yourself from the miasma of everyone else's consciousness. I like that phrase because 
I feel like that's where we've been at for the last 2000 years, right? Age of Pisces type of energy when everyone's been kind of in the muck altogether and it's been hard to separate your consciousness from everybody else's and we've been in this thick miasma. So rising up out of that, like, I'm, I'm like literally, literally seeing like, you know, when you're doing the dishes and you have the dish detergent, dish, the dish detergent, the dish, the dish soap <laughs> in the sink and it's all bubbly and there's all these little bubbles all, I mean, or even bubble bath, right? Just a bunch of bubbles all stuck together. And sometimes you can separate one bubble from the rest of them and hold them on your, hold it on your finger. That, that, that's what this is. It's like, we've all been a bunch of bubbles all stuck together. Now our bubbles are separating. And what can you do with a bubble that is separated? Well, if you know you have a whole handful of bubbles all stuck together, if you blow on them, they're usually pretty heavy and they sink to the ground. But what happens if you have just one bubble? That's Now you're like a kid blowing bubbles, right? And that one bubble can float up and float away. So separating yourself from all the other bubbles, separating your consciousness from the miasma of all other consciousness is, is going to help you float up and float away. Freeing yourself from the oppression, that, that, that like the weight, freeing yourself from the weight that has been holding you down, freeing yourself from the weight that has been holding you down. And the other end of this is, this is like, I'm trying to figure out a way how to avoid like cause and effect ways of speaking here. Um, Cause it's not exactly like this process causes you to have more compassion, but it's also not exactly that having more compassion causes you to go through this process of self liberation. It's that it just goes hand in hand with it. it just goes hand in hand with it, right? Totally connected. As you liberate yourself, you're also coming, to, you just naturally, it, it's all hand in hand. There is no cause and effect here. It's just part of the simultaneous process you're also developing this deeper like and you're it's more like remembering especially for you guys right remembering these deeper layers of compassion both for yourself both for yourself and for others and being able to really access it because that is part of your soul that is part of who, who you are and is part of your true nature it's just that you know along the line <laughs> along the journey you stopped accessing you stopped activating your compassion as much as you once did because it was actually damaging for you to do so because if you were fully 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 compassionate it would have been extremely difficult to exist on earth in you know the darker the denser energy days right the denser energy days and some of you you know can still be in can still be in that kind of vibration of feeling like sometimes even feeling like your compassion is your worst enemy because your compassion is what makes you suffer, right? Your compassion can be the thing that makes you suffer. Sometimes it can even feel like if only I could stop caring, then I would stop suffering because if I stopped caring, then I would stop hurting, right? Sometimes caring, caring so much about others, caring so, like worrying so much about others and wanting everyone to have the, the best possible life that can cause you to suffer, right? That can cause you to suffer. Um, so uh, I have a, how to try and describe this. This is something I've been thinking about for the last couple of days. It is, okay, how am I gonna do this? <laughs> this King of Cups, right? He has these two cups, these two cups, and the King of Cups is this like master of emotional balance. And I think over the past couple of weeks, if you've been following the videos in linear time. I've been talking about like stepping into emotional maturity, right? Emotional maturity. And that involves a lot of balance. Um, so I think recently I've been talking more about balancing your emotions and coming into emotional maturity on a human level. This is like a new level of balance. I feel like recently I've been thinking more about horizontal balance, you know, human level, human level balance, where you're just balanced, like getting your own emotions balanced, right? Balancing yourself out, out from like depression and mania, or just from like balancing out anger and happiness, finding the neutral space, finding your balanced point, finding your center point. And I know you guys have like had a lot of success with that because now you're opening up to this higher level of vertical balance. I could call it vertical balance. Um, another way of describing that is the balance between your personal perspective, like your human perspective. And this is like balancing out the perspective of two different levels of compassion, right? The human, the human perspective. On the one hand, we have the human perspective where 
the human it, it feels so 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 deeply is capable of feeling so deeply right if the human opens opens themselves up to that then the human can feel so incredibly deeply um and as i was just saying right sometimes it's the compassion and the feeling so deeply that causes pain and it, it's like how do you like how do you keep your heart open in hell right how do you keep your heart open in hell that's what sometimes earth can feel like you want to guard your heart because if you feel too strongly then it's just suffering for yourself so on the one hand it's trying to figure out how to have that human level of compassion where when you just having compassion for someone no matter like what they're going through right being able to empathize with people and being able to I would almost say even be inspired by suffering it's like when you see a person or a group of people or something happening on the planet or environmental stuff right when you when you see stuff going on and you you're moved to empathy for it and you move to compassion that inspires you to take action right that inspires you to take action that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to, to trying to talk about right you can be inspired by your own compassion on the other hand we have the universal perspective the universal perspective and from the universal perspective everything is perfect everything is perfect <laughs> everything is perfect everything is happening exactly as it should be nothing has gone wrong everything is perfect right and how, how do you make sense of these two things because the human looks out at the world and goes look at all these things that are wrong look at all the suffering um you know i i am moved to levels of compassion that cause me harm because i am so sensitive to the suffering that is happening on earth i don't know how to handle <laughs> all of this suffering right because my my compassion is overflowing and then on the other hand the universe is saying everything is perfect everything is happening exactly as it should be there is a pattern there is a plan there is a process this is all happening for a reason everything is perfect right everything is perfect and and all is one all is one and you know from the universe's perspective you know and you can use whatever word you want there source god most high whatever from the universe's perspective there is no difference between somebody who is doing good and somebody who is doing bad right there there is no difference there is no difference and the human can really struggle to understand that right because you go but good people are good and and bad people who are doing bad things are are bad how how can it all be the same it doesn't make any sense right it doesn't make any sense to the human so this whole process here I'm trying to get at is balancing these two things out and actually finding the harmony between those two perspectives and this is where things get really paradoxical this is where we need to be able to sit in the paradox and like this is non-duality right this is getting centered between these two things where because you know if you completely adopt the like when you're in your human body if you were to completely adopt this universal perspective where you go everything is perfect on a human level that can create like weirdness right it can be weird because then you could hear a story about a natural disaster and you and you know things the bad things that happened and the human could go oh yeah well everything is perfect so i guess that was supposed to happen and i don't need to feel bad or do anything about all the bad things that happened and it can just like on a human level that that can that can be like bizarre right like that 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 can feel bizarre and most humans just feel like they don't want to adopt that perspective all the way because it would just be too unhuman <laughs> it wouldn't feel like being a human right it wouldn't feel like being a human if you were to just completely just say it doesn't matter what is happening that is that that that's it doesn't ma like suffering doesn't matter right it, 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 if we were to say suffering doesn't matter because everything is perfect that just feels too weird it feels too unhuman and we don't really want to go there um but at the other end of it we have all experienced like compassionate overload where we are overwhelmed by suffering right so we also don't want to go there we also don't want to go there we need to balance this out we need to find the center point of these two perspectives the human and the universal the human and the in the universal where we are full of human compassion and then we are also full of this universal perspective of everything being perfect and so when you hold the paradox when you expand yourself to hold both perspectives and then you can sit there and that's when you know when your friend comes to you with their latest tower moment or the latest story about what's gone wrong in your life you're not just going to tell them oh yeah well everything's happening for a reason and you know 
tough luck because I guess that was supposed to happen to you or maybe it's karma or blah, 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 right? You're not gonna, you're not just gonna be completely heartless and just like tell them that, yeah, well, whatever, right? <laughs> no, you're gonna feel empathy for them. You're gonna feel compassion for them. You're gonna maybe even cry with them, right? And you're gonna sit there and you're gonna feel it with your full human self, but you're also, you're also gonna be surrounded in the cocoon, the cocoon, the, 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 the cocooning energy of knowing and yet, and yet, and yet, and yet, I know that this is working out somehow, some way I don't understand. And yet, and yet, I know that, I know that everything is perfect on a higher level. And I know that my, our higher selves have like understand the picture. And I know there is a pattern here. And like, I know that everything is going to work out in the long run. I just can't understand it right now. Right. And, you know, that the, there can be a melding of this. And I think, you know, we have our, I'm sure you've all been like merging and melding these two perspectives possibly for years or your entire life, right? You've already been like working on this. This isn't, I don't think this, I don't think these concepts are brand new to any of you. So <laughs> if this isn't brand new to you, why are you receiving this video? It's because you've spiraled around to like a new level of integrating this balance to where it like really clicks in as part of what I could call your default mode network or your default mode network, right? Just stabilizing into that, stabilizing into that so that when you walk through your life, whether you check the news or someone calls you and you hear about something that happened that activates your compassion, right? You feel the compassion and you can even feel good about feeling the empathy and flowing the compassion and then taking steps to alleviate suffering. You can feel good about all of that while still like even with tears on your cheeks, right? You can, you can find the resilience in that. And at the same time, knowing, knowing, knowing that it's all going to be okay, that everything's going to be okay. And that there is a plan or a purpose or a pattern, however you want to perceive that, right? However you want to perceive the bigger picture, there is a bigger picture, there is a bigger picture, and you're going to know that. You're just going to know that, and that is going to, like, prevent you from falling down into those, into, like, compassion overload. And it's going to prevent you from falling down into the depths of despair when you're overwhelmed with, like, all of the things that happen in human life, right? So I hope... That's, I think, as best as I can articulate that today. I hope that, I hope I transmitted the energy. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Because it doesn't even matter if I make sense, right? Because I, I know that if I'm just sitting here and waving my hands around and running my mouth, then you're going to get the energy and what you're going to be activated in whatever way serves you best, right? So it doesn't even matter if I make sense. That's the best part. <laughs> okay. Um, but I do want to come around in circular fashion once more to the very first thing I was saying, which was something about speeding up your learning process, essentially, right? Speeding up the learning process. And what are the, what, what does all this have to do with each other? So how, how it is striking me in this moment is that the lack when we were in an imbalance, when, when we did not, when we were, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> let me start that, that again. When we were not balanced between human and universe, right? When they were extremely polarized and when we could not see to eye to eye, right? That actually prevented us from learning. That prevented us from learning because remember I was just, I was talking about the the arguing back and forth, right? The arguing back and forth. Is it, you know, is it nature or is it nurture? Is it nature or is it nurture? Or all the different things that human argue about. They go, is it this or is it that? Is it this or is it that? You know, um, is everything perfect or is everything horrible, right? Is is Earth a utopia or is it a hell planet, right? Like, which is it, which is it, which is it? Oh, we're going back and forth, back and forth. Well, the thing is that, is that it is this and it is that. It is this and that. This and that. This is part of I'm going to start calling it <laughs> paradox initiations, paradox initiations. <laughs> this is going to keep coming up more and more and more and more. And they happen slowly and over time because it is difficult for the human mind to fully hold these kind of paradoxical ideas. 
Uh, some people more than others, right? Some people are kind of just born more chaotic and they can get this easier. For me, I have had to struggle for years and years and years. My mind when I was younger was extremely linearized and I have had to struggle so long. I've had so many experiences of the universe trying to like break me free of the oppression of my linear mind, right? I've had to break free of it and I'm having to slowly over years practice holding the paradox, practice holding the paradox, practicing understanding that it is this and that, this and that, right? I used to say, is it this or that? Which one is it? No, 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 Now I say it's this and that, right? The initiation of the paradox. And so when we hold the paradox, when we know that it is this and that, the, the, like I'm actually seeing like a brick wall coming down, right? That rapidly accelerates our learning process. It's interesting. I wouldn't have initially, I would never would have guessed that those things were related. <laughs> never would have guessed that those things are related. And I would even say that the convoluted spiral pattern of my speech in this video, I mean, in all of my videos, I know I'm pretty all over the place all the time. And I would say even that is an example or a manifestation of why it's so um, helpful to break out of the linear thinking because if you try to go in a straight line then it's just way slower to get where you're going if you allow yourself to just go crazy and spiral all over the place then you can actually get to where you're going way faster because you're not like a fighting you, you don't fight anything like if you hit if you hit it's like you never actually even hit any barriers you never actually hit any brick walls if you're going in a linear fashion it's like Imagine you're digging a tunnel, right? You're digging a tunnel, tunnel with a pickaxe and you hit some extremely hard rock. Um, and if you wanted to keep your tunnel going straight, you would have to spend years maybe chipping through that extremely hard rock. But what if you just allowed yourself to follow, follow the path? What if, if you turned to your left and you started tunneling to your left? What if that rock was much softer and you could just go that way? And then what if you just kept following the softest rock and that, that could spit you out the other side of the mountain? You could finish your tunnel digging way faster that way because you did not insist on taking the straight path. Of course, you could take the straight path if you wanted to. And maybe for some people it is relevant for them to take the straight path. Maybe some people just really want to take the straight path because then they can look and see a nice straight path. Like that is absolutely valid and you can absolutely do that. And there are some people who will do that and that will be beautiful and perfect for them because it is this and that, right? So. It's the same thing with thoughts and with your learning process. If you allow yourself to just like go nuts and spiral all over the place, then you can come out to, to your conclusion or it's not even really a conclusion. It's just like you can come into your wisdom. You can come into your wisdom sooner <laughs> if you allow yourself to go in these crazy spiral patterns. Um, that's something I have really learned like by listening to myself talk, like making all of these videos. I've always talked like this, but I have basically talked like this at my friends and family and I have spent most of my life exhausting my friends and family because I will just do this. I will talk exactly like this at them for sometimes hours on end and, and I've had some extremely patient friends and family who have put up with me, right? <laughs> um, but I never really, it wasn't until I started making these videos when I was forced to listen to myself talk when I watched the videos and I would go, wow, it's insane. It's insane listening to myself talk because it's just like all over the place. But what I learned from listening to myself talk is that by following the crazy loops, that is, I, I actually learned so much and I actually come to understanding from that, right? I actually come to and understanding from that literally by just going in the crazy loops. It, it all somehow comes together. It does all somehow co come together, right? And you don't, I don't always necessarily like connect all the dots or anything, but it, it doesn't always matter, right? You don't always need to connect all the dots. You, sometimes you just get the gist of it. You just get the energy and somehow it all works out. And that's really part of this big picture thing, right? Um, you're not going to always understand how all of the dots connect in the big picture, but you can with, once you start noticing it, once you start noticing it, you start to, you start to trust because you go, Oh yeah, I've seen this, this, I've seen everything click into place enough times now that like, now I get it. Now I trust it. Now I trust it. I don't always understand exactly how it worked, but like, I do get that this is all somehow <laughs> mysteriously falling into place, even when it looks like it's chaos all over the place. So allowing yourself, to, allowing your thinking and allowing even like your work patterns and your habits, allowing them to be, to be more chaotic can actually help you learn. 
don't be afraid to follow the path of least resistance. It could really get you to where you want to go faster. Soul love number 33. Color number 40. And Divine Feminine. Interesting. I got this card for myself this morning. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about non-linear ways of thinking and breaking out of the linearized way of thinking. I could also use the words feminine versus masculine, right? And it's not that we want to entirely lose our masculine-minded way of thinking that we have so carefully practiced over the last 2000 years, right? And and more. But it is that we no longer need to be beholden to it and it no longer needs to be our only way of operating, right? And we're moving into the divine feminine abstract high priestess void consciousness type of completely open-ended chaotic energy, right? And it's following your soul, following what your soul loves. I mean, this soul love card, this could be so many things to me. This is, this, the aspect of this card, I mean, I think this is gonna mean a lot of things to many of you. The aspect of this energy that I wanna focus on right now is simply following what your soul loves, right? Following what your soul loves, following what your soul loves, and allowing that to be the navigational allowing that to be your compass, right? Allowing that to be your compass. And I think, I mean, I know, I know that you're all already doing this and I feel like there's a leveling up available to this, a leveling up available to this. It, it might just take a little bit of courage. It might take a little bit of courage. It's like, are you truly in every moment? So you can, you can ask yourself, because this will be different for everybody. What percent, <laughs> what percent of your, of your, time or what percent of your choices are you following what your soul loves how often are you actually using that as your compass it could be 10 percent. it could be 90 percent. it's probably not 100 percent. because i bet if it was 100 percent, you wouldn't be watching this video because you would be much higher frequency than the bandwidth of this video right it's probably not 100 percent. i don't know if anyone has ever 100 percent anything while we're in our human bodies right so it's probably not 100 but it could be anywhere between one in 99 even, right? <laughs> what percent of the time are you following what your soul loves? Are you doing what your soul loves? Or are you allowing just the love of your soul to just shine out? How often are you feeling this, right? And then, so the leveling up here is just allowing that to be more of your experience. And again, the goal doesn't need to be getting it to 100%. It could be just having it 10% more online, right? <laughs> having it be most of your day instead of just some of your day, right? Allowing your soul's love to guide you through whatever it is that you want to do and allowing you to experience more colorful experiences, more colorful experiences. I have an example for this and it is about my cats because you know, it's hard to go a whole reading without talking about my pets. <laughs> but of course, because I have, if you've been watching my recent videos, you know I have gotten a new kitten and it is adorable because I have a, a four-year-old female cat um, and she was pretty accepting of the new kitten, right? She sulked for a few days, um, but then they started playing and we've had the new kitten for three weeks now and <laughs> it's been so interesting watching them to get to know each other because she is a very, my, my four-year-old cat, she is very lazy, she's very, she just wants to be quiet, she just likes to sit up on her perch and not be disturbed, right? But of course now there is a very playful kitten in the house, he keeps running up and tackling her and, and attacking her and wanting to play, 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 right? And <laughs> it's really funny because I can tell that she is kind of doesn't know what to make of this. She doesn't know what to make of this. On the one hand, she just doesn't want to be bothered. She just wants to sit in her cat bed and just look out the window and just be a, like a mature, boring, lazy cat, right? But on the other hand, she's also very, very interested in the kitten. She's always watching him and she does play with him. She, she, she gets down and she plays with him. And 
<laughs> Sometimes she'll even like dangle her tail so that the kitten can play with her tail. It's really cute. And she's like opening up more and more and more to being more and more playful. I'm actually starting to see that she's playing even more on her own and she's getting more interested in her toys. So really it's like the kitten has brought color into her life right has it's like been rejuvenating her it's bringing back her 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 own like inner kitten self right she's getting so much more playful and she's really coming alive and you know having this kitten it has brought a ton of chaos into her life right a ton of chaos she now has to kick him out of her bed and she and when she's just walking around she gets tackled and it's brought a ton of chaos into her life but it also has brought an brought an, it has also brought a ton of love and light and play and joy and excitement into her life. It has brought so much color into her life. So <laughs> this is something we can all experience. And again, I'm not saying that you that you want to open yourself up to like massive amounts of chaos. No, because I, I know I know that a lot of you have actually been trying to close the doors <laughs> on chaos, right? Keeping the chaos out there because some of you have had extremely chaotic lives and you've been trying to retreat out of the chaos to like find a stable, secure place. So I'm not saying like, just go be super chaotic or just like let all the chaos in. No, this is like balancing, 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 right? And this is different degrees to everybody. It's like, if you have been, if you've really been in the chaos, You're, you might not necessarily want to open yourself up to any level of chaos right now, but if your life has been very stagnant, closed off, stuck, if you've been retreating, 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 and if you've said no to a lot of things, and again, that can all be important and good for you to do, but you can ask yourself, this is just something you can ask yourself and you can think about it and feel into it. Can you open up to like a little bit more color in your life? Can you open up to a little bit more excitement in your life? And if yes, how much, right? And it could be something like getting a kitten right? <laughs> or talking to more people or going out a little bit more. Just like it, it can be something, something small and something that you can, it, you can also compartmentalize the chaos, right? If you don't want to like you know, you don't want to get a new kitten because that would be literally inviting the chaos into your home. <laughs> you can go out into chaos, right? You can go to a bar, you can go dancing at a club. You can just go to your in-laws place if your in-laws are crazy, right? You can like go to a place that contains chaos, experience the chaos, be activated by it, get something out of it, and then retreat back into your own sanctuary, right? You can also just go into the chaos. So that, so that it doesn't actually come into your space, doesn't actually come into you, you can go into it. And that way you can um, have a greater degree of control about how much chaos you're basically exposing yourself to. So anyway, the point, the point here is as you go through this feminine, winding, chaotic, non-linear experience of learning, it's opening you up to a lot more color and excitement, a lot more color and excitement in your life. If you choose to say yes to it, if you choose to say yes to it, you can always say no because it is this and that, right? It is this and that. You can say yes, you can say no. You can say both. You can change your mind. Every day you can say something different. <laughs> it is this and that. It is this and that. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave you there. That feels like the end of the message. So sending you all so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye.